Hi, this is The Peaceful Prepper. This is part two of staying cool in an emergency. I've put a link to part one below. Heat waves can be life-threatening. In the United States, over four times more people die from heat-related illnesses every year than from the cold. In part one of staying cool in an emergency, I talked about four items that I thought could be helpful to avoid heat-related illnesses when there is no power and one of those was a damp towel to help create evaporation. Evaporative, evaporative, not sure exactly how to pronounce it, cooling has been used for thousands of years. One of the ways the body cools itself is to perspire and have that perspiration evaporate. Using damp towels on the body uses that same principle. Super evaporative cooling towels can be bought that claim to provide more cooling for longer periods of time than just a regular towel in water. In the marketing, they make all kinds of claims. The best way to battle heat drops 20 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit below your normal body temperature with just a shake, stays cool for hours, which sounds great, but that's the marketing. I've been thinking about the best way to prepare for a heat wave during a bug-in situation when you're without power or city water and need to stay in your home. During a heat wave, you'll need to use more of your stored water to stay hydrated. And for those of us who live in apartments, it can be difficult to find space for enough water. So are cooling towels worth putting into an emergency kit, or should we just use a bandana or other towel that's already in the kit? Some of the possible pros that I want to check out are that they might require less water and stay cool longer, which would help us stretch our water reserve. They don't require cold water. You know, if you're using regular water, it's nice to use cold water. It, it adds to the coolness of the towel, obviously. They don't drip, which may or may not be a particularly big advantage, but that's the case and they might provide more intense cooling. The cons for putting them in an emergency kit is they're not multi-use. They won't replace a bandana or a towel in terms of being able to use them to filter water or mop up spills or use as a, a towel on your face or your body. They have to be kept damp in their container or a plastic bag, so they require more space than a bandana or a camp towel and they're expensive compared to other towels. These are the items that I'm gonna compare. This is the Arctic Chill Towel, and it's 16 by 25, and currently on Amazon, it's 12.96. This is the Frog Togs Chili Sport Towel, and it's 33 by 6.5 inches, so it's a very different shape. And it's currently $9.90 on Amazon.com. This is the Chillets brand cooling towel, and it's 13 by 29 and a half, and it's currently $7.81 on Amazon.com. And then just to see how it compares to what I would normally use. This is just a 100% cotton bandana. And as I'm sure you know, the, the price for bandanas, there's a wide range. Um, I have no idea how much this one was. And this is an REI camp towel, microfiber camp towel, which when I looked at the website, they don't have the same kind. They have another version that's 12 by 22. And the current version is $12.50. Um, I think it's a sort of fancier towel because I don't think this was anywhere near that price. But So I'm going to do an experiment with these five things. I want to know how much water they need to activate, how long they stay cool. And I have no, I'm not sure since they work on evaporation, not... Um, I don't think they're cool by themselves, but I want to test that. So I have a, um, just a device that will check temperature. So currently, 
It's in the low 80s in my apartment right now. So currently the um, camp towel is 84 degrees. Everything should be the same because it's just sitting here. But just checking, yeah, everything is 84.3 degrees. So I'm going to set up what I think will work as the experiment, and I'll be back. All right, what I'm going to do is show you each of the towels, and then I'll start doing the water, and I'm hoping that um, in my editing I'll figure out how to either cut a lot of it out or maybe do some kind of speed it up for a fancy effect, because um, I think it's going to get pretty boring when I'm just um, wetting them and measuring the water. But this is the Arctic Chill Towel. And all of them have kind of a rubbery feel to them. They're not like regular towels, and they don't feel... I don't know whether you can tell the difference. They don't feel like a microfiber towel. That's that. This is the Frog Togs. And it also, it's very rubbery. This one happens to be long and thin. They have a side that has some texture and that. Hmm. And this one doesn't want to open. There it goes. And this is the Chillet. Again, they all have slightly different texture, but they're all the same rubbery material. All right, so I'm going to start with the Arctic Chill. And what I've done is I've put two cups of water in this. And what I'm going to do with each of them is to put it in, soak up the water, rinse it out, um, wring it out the way they suggest you do, and lay it out on this plastic. It, it probably isn't exactly equivalent to putting it on a human body, but I don't think I can spend a few hours with five towels on me. So that's the way it's going to go. That way I'll have a sense whatever water is left, I'm going to put it back in my measuring cup to see how much, and then I'm going to do that with each towel. So here's the first one. Because of my spillage, the, the water measurements are a bit approximate, although I think they'll give a general idea of um, water absorption. They, they ran from an ounce and a half to five ounces. What I'm going to do when I um, put together the information, since these are all such different sizes, I'll figure out square inches and we can compare the water that way rather than just straight out. So it's been another 15 minutes and they're all still very damp. I just, and I'm just doing a touch test for this. Um, so it's half an hour later than my last check and an hour and a half since um, they all were put in water. And this is still very damp. This, not nearly so much. This is okay. The bandana is definitely um, dried out quite a bit. And the microfiber towel, I'm surprised how long it's holding its water. This must have been, um, I've had this for a long time, and it must be an old version of a camp towel, because I think now they really try to have them quick drying. So it's been about four hours since I started this experiment, 
and both the Arctic chill towel and the microfiber camp towel are still a little bit damp and and certainly cooler than the environment. This may be a little bit cooler than this, but I'm impressed with, with both of these. I... Here are the results of my comparison. You can see that the water consumption ranged from one and a half ounces to five ounces, but the size of the towels were very different, and all these materials come in multiple sizes. So I calculated how much water per square inch was used, and I'll talk about that next. In terms of longevity, the Arctic Chill was still providing evaporative cooling after four hours, and the microfiber camp towel was a close second, which really surprised me. Not surprisingly, the bandana, which was by far the thinnest material, stayed damp the shortest amount of time, just um, an hour and a half or an hour and 45 minutes. So here I've let my inner geek run free, and I have a color-coded graph comparing all the towels along, um, along four different criteria. The values on the left are not consistent across categories, but they're consistent for comparative purposes, and I wanted everything on one graph. So I calculated the amount of water needed per square inch so that you can compare the materials regardless of the size of the towel. Less water per square inch is what we wanted if we're conserving water, and that's the blue bar, and certainly the bandana use less water per square inch than any of the others. Then I calculated how much water was needed for four hours of cooling, because really that was the purpose, is to have more time cooling with the amount of water that was used. And it, so um, again, we're looking for a low amount. And for example, the bandana would have needed to be rinsed almost three times to provide cooling for four hours, which is why the water is that's needed for four hours is high, whereas the water per square inch was very low. The green bar is the length it stayed cool, and that um, from the previous chart, and the orange is how much it cost. If, like me, you like graphs and playing with numbers, have a pause, check out the graph more closely. For the rest of us, I'm going to move on to announce the winner. And the winner is the Arctic Chill Towel. I wanted to know how to get the most cooling for the least water in case water needed to be conserved during a heat wave, and the least amount of water that was needed by any of the towels for four hours is the Arctic Chill Towel. But the real winner is the microfiber towel, with the bandana coming in second, because they only used an ounce or two more water to provide four hours of cooling. They're significantly less expensive and they're multi-use items. They do more than just provide evaporative cooling. For my home kit, I'll use the super evaporative towels, the sort of fancy ones. I have them. They work well. I'm not sure I'd go out and buy them. You know, I think they, they might provide just a little bit more cooling that certainly to the touch it felt that way, but it's a judgment call whether they're worth, worth the cost. But for any mobile kit where space is an issue, I'd go with one of the multi-use towels. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos and please like, comment, and subscribe.